So uh, last time we talked about and kind of finished up talking about uh, different types of reactions and balancing reactions. Uh, we previously talked about uh, moles and grams and converting to those things. So we're going to kind of put all those things together here in this chapter. And we're really going to talk about stoichiometry, uh, which is basically using a balanced equation and uh, basically using it to figure out all kinds of things, things like uh, if you started with a certain amount of reactants, how much products you would make. Um, if you produced a certain amount of products, you could go backwards and also figure out how much reactants that you started with. Uh, so it's going to really kind of put all those things together, the balancing of equations, uh, the grams and the moles here. So let's get going. Let's do a couple of things around here. All right, so let's talk about balanced equations. So when we do have an equation, we should always make sure that it's balanced and especially everything that we're gonna be talking about sort of in this chapter and involving stoichiometry uh, definitely will not work if we don't have a balanced equation. So you always wanna make sure that you balance the equation like we talked about. That means that we essentially just change the coefficients until we have the same number of elements on each side, uh, both the reactant side and the product side. And when we do look at basically a balanced equation, we can look at it in the sense of those coefficients as really being the moles. So that gives us an, a nice relationship. So for example, if we had 2a plus 3b, gives us 4c. We could look at each of these coefficients as really the moles of each of those things. So for example, we could say for every two moles of a we put in there, we also have to put in there three moles of B. We could also say for every two moles of A we put in there, we also will get out four moles of C. And for every three moles of B we put in there, we will also get out four moles of C. So these are all sort of what are referred to sometimes as the mole to mole relationship from a balanced equation. And it is the relationship that we use when we do stoichiometry. And it really is nothing more than just the actual balanced coefficient there in the equation. And that's why obviously when we do these type of problems, it's always important to make sure that you always start there. You want to start with the equation, make sure it's balanced. Again, if you see coefficients in the equation, it's probably balanced, but um, you may just want to double check. If you don't see any coefficients at all, then you definitely should check to make sure that that equation is balanced. So as we'll talk about here in just a second, although we say like two moles of A is equal to three moles of B, they're what are known as being stoichiometrically equal to each other. Uh, they're not equal to each other in terms of two doesn't equal three or anything like that, but they are equal to each other in terms of proportion. So in this particular reaction here, if we want to produce a certain amount of product, we need to throw in there, for example, two moles of A with every three moles of B uh, to do that. So kind of like when you make cookies or something like that, you know, you need so much flour, so much chocolate chips and all that to get like a dozen cookies. This is sort of what stoichiometry is. It gives us sort of the relationship of what we need in terms of getting this reaction actually to occur. So when we look at an equation such as this, again, we can usually look at those coefficients and say a couple of things. Uh, we could say, for example, we could do a molecule to molecule relationship as well. Uh, we could say in this example here, one molecule of ethanol, and again, that would be because the coefficient here is one, uh, reacts with three molecules of O2, gives us two molecules of CO2, and three molecules of H2O in this particular case. But really for stoichiometry, we do really use that sort of mole-to-mole -mole relationship. And again, we could say that one mole of ethanol here reacts with three moles of O2, two moles of CO2 produced, we need three moles of O2. So for example, in this particular reaction here, there's really four sort of mole to mole relationships. Again, one mole of our ethanol would equal three moles of O2. Uh, one mole of our ethanol here would get us two moles of CO2. We could also do one mole of our ethanol would get us three moles of water. And we could also do the exact same thing for our oxygen. Pretty much uh, we would have uh, three moles of O2, gives us two moles of CO2. And three moles of O2 gives us 
three moles of H2O. So really from this one reaction here, our equation, we have actually one, two, three, four, five different relationships that we could use. So what do we use these relationships for? Really stoichiometry is really nothing more than uh, conversion and conversion factors. So instead of a traditional sort of conversion factor where we go to the table and try to uh, find the conversion we're looking for, to find our conversion factors here when we do stoichiometry, we actually just get it from the equation. And both of these are what are referred to as being equalities. So just like a normal equality, like we talked about with conversions, you technically could write two different conversion factors for either of these. So for example, I could say for this one that I put in a box for every one mole of ethanol up on top, I would have three moles of O2 on the bottom are like a normal conversion factor. You could reverse it if you needed the O2 up on top. And that would give me one mole of ethanol on the bottom here. And for each of those five equalities, you can write two conversion factors for each of them. Now, you most likely will not use, obviously, both of those conversion factors in a problem. You'll just use whichever one you need uh, depending on sort of what you're trying to solve for. So for example, here, if we were, uh, if we said we started with uh, three moles of O2 and we want to know how many moles of the ethanol that we put in there with it, we would basically just do a conversion problem. We would start with the three moles of O2 and thinking of like dimensional analysis, we want to get rid of the O2. So here we would want to use the conversion factor here on the left. Since the O2 is on the bottom, we would say from the equation, there's three moles of O2 for every one mole of our ethanol. And this is really what stoichiometry is. This is the big kind of conversion here that allows us to go from moles of O2 to moles of ethanol in this case. And I think I could do this math. I think we end up with one mole of, whoops, ethanol there in this particular case. And sometimes people get really freaked out about the whole stoichiometry part, but it really is nothing more than just that. It's just really a conversion factor. And again, it's just where you get your conversion factor from is the actual equation rather than, um, you know, like a table and something like that. Any questions on that so far? And the reason why we need sort of conversion factors like that is because usually in these type of problems, you're given some piece of information about something you're not really interested in, and you need a way to go from something in that equation that you're not interested in to something else in the equation. So again, it allows you to do that by using that multiple relationship of the balanced equation. So for example, here, if we look at this one, um, it says, uh, what does this say there? It says that according to the equation, how many moles of sulfur dioxide are produced when one mole of copper one sulfide? So really when we do sort of stoichiometry problems, there's really kind of four basic steps when you do a, a regular run of the mill stoichiometry problem. The first step is to make sure that you have a balanced equation. The second step is to convert whatever they give you to moles. And a lot of times that will involve going from grams to moles. So that's our molar mass that we use to do that. Third is to do the mole to mole relationship from the balanced equation. And lastly, you want to convert from moles to other units. And So if we look in this particular example here, we could kind of follow those steps and let's see what's going on here. So first off, we have an equation and it's balanced. So we have really all of our uh, coefficients there and it is a balanced equation. Here we want to know how many moles of sulfur dioxide, which is here, would be produced if we started with one mole of copper one sulfide, which is here. So the first thing is balanced equation, which we have, so that's done. The next thing is the only thing that they gave us was uh, 
a couple of things. One mole of copper two sulfide reacting with two moles of copper one sulfide. So the relationship here between these two things that we could get would come from the equation. And we see that for every one mole of copper two sulfide, we would produce one mole of SO2. And in this case, basically we could assume if we want that we started to say with one mole of copper one sulfide. And if we want to know how much we would produce of the SO2, we could do that stoichiometry, one mole of copper one sulfide gives us one mole of SO2. The moles will cancel and we basically will produce one mole of SO2. What we're actually seeing from this relationship here is basically it's a one-to-one -one relationship, which means for every one mole that we put in of this guy, we get out one mole of this guy here. So it looks like B would be the right answer in this particular case. Now, if we look at the same one and it told us that three moles of copper were actually produced, how many moles of copper one sulfide did we react with? Again, we could follow our sort of uh, information here. We do have the equation that's balanced. In this case, it actually did give us a number of three moles of copper metal. So we have produced three moles of the copper metal. We want to know how much of the copper one sulfide we started with. So the only number that they gave us was moles and it's already in moles, so we don't have to do any type of conversion. So then the next thing we wanna do is find again our relationship. So in this particular case, we're interested in this guy. We are starting with this guy over here, which is copper. So the mole to mole relationship that we could get from this equation is for every one mole of the Cu2S, we will get out six moles of the copper here. And again, from that, we could get two conversion factors. We could get that one mole of the Cu2S over six moles of copper, or six moles of copper gives us one mole of Cu2S. So in this case, we're going to start with what they gave us, which was three moles of copper. Again, we're not interested in copper, so we need a way to go from copper to our copper one sulfide. And again, it's this multiple relationships that's gonna allow us to do that. In this particular case, we wanna get rid of copper, so we're going to use the conversion factor here on the left. Again, it just comes straight from the equation, the coefficients, and what we have is six moles of copper gives us one mole of Cu2S. The moles of copper are going to cancel each other out. And essentially, if we divide three by six, we get 0 0.5 moles of the Cu2S. So it would be this guy right here. And again, basically what this is telling us is, you know, if we put in there half a mole of copper two sulfide, basically a one to six relationship, we get six times the amount out of the copper here in terms of this reaction. Question on those steps there. So as I mentioned before, from any balanced equation, you could come up with all these sort of conversion factors here. And you always want to do it from the balanced equation. So in this particular example here, we could say there are two moles of water. Should be an arrow, I think. <laughs> Gives you uh, two moles of H2. We could also say for every two moles of water. Gives you one mole of O2. And we could even, again, stay on the same side of the arrow and have a relationship for every two moles of H2 gives you one mole of O2. So again, from this one little equation here, we basically have three different sort of relationships, stoichiometric relationships. And again, from each of those relationships, we really can write two conversion factors for each of them. Again, you don't have to use all of them. You probably only use the one that you need, but you can, again, from this balance equation, come up with 
all three of those relationships, those six technically conversion factors that could come from it. So as we talked about a second ago in this particular case of that earlier one that we were looking at, we can come up with five different stoichiometric relationships, multiple relationships. And as I mentioned earlier, again, you can write two conversion factors for each of those. So really from this one equation, again, you could hit something like 10 different conversion factors that potentially you could use. And it's important to remember, sometimes people think about when we talk about stoichiometry, which is what we're talking about here, that the relationships always has to sort of cross the arrows, like something from here to there or something from here to here. But again, it doesn't. You could do a stoichiometry relationship, as we could see here, by staying on, say, the left-hand side of the arrow. You could also do the relationship between these two guys as well. So you could definitely do the relationship where you cross over from reactants to products, could also go from products back to reactants, but also you can find relationships between the two reactants and between the two products. So the benefit of all those sort of relationships that you could get is it, it really does allow you to figure out a lot of things. Like if you just have one piece of information, you know about how much reactants you're starting with, you can figure out how much of the other reactants you need, you can figure out how much products you need. If you know about one product, you can figure out how much other products you would produce could also figure out how much of all the reactants you would start with. So again, it gives you a lot of versatility of figuring out what is going on in a particular reaction. And essentially you just need sort of one piece of information to do that. And again, here are our different sort of conversion factors. And again, they all come from the multiple relationship from the equation. Um, and again, the first one is a one to two relationship. So that is where these conversion factors come from. Again, both of these conversion factors and the rest of them, obviously, as you go through one to six would be this relationship one to one on the other side as well. So again, you don't necessarily have to write all these conversion factors when you do these type of problems. You just really want to focus in, obviously, on the ones that are appropriate for the question that you're dealing with. So, for example, here, if we look at this uh, question here, how many moles of NaF uh, will be produced if 3.5 moles of sodium uh, is reacted with excess um, Na2SiF6? So again, those four steps when you do these type of problems is we wanna make sure always a balanced equation and we have one. The next thing we wanna do is convert to moles and that's whatever they give us, we wanna to convert to moles. So in this particular case, they gave us 3.5 moles. So we don't really have to do much with that. So we're good to go on that since they gave us that. The next thing that we want to do really is the stoichiometry part. So we want to find that mole to mole relationship. And the mole to mole relationship, again, what we're looking for is the two things we're interested in. One thing that we're interested in is whatever they gave us. So in this particular case, they gave us moles of sodium, which is this guy. And the other thing usually is sort of what we're trying to find, which is the NAF in this case, which is this guy. Now, from this equation, the mole to mole relationship is for every four moles of sodium, we get out six moles of NaF. And again, from that one conversion factor, we can have one uh, equality, we could have two conversion factors. We could say that there's four moles of sodium over six moles of NaF are six moles of NaF over four moles of sodium. So that's what we wanna do next in our calculation. So we wanna treat it just like dimensional analysis in a regular conversion problem. So since we have moles of sodium up on top, we wanna to cancel out the sodium. So in this particular case, we would need to use the conversion factor on the right to do that. And again, that comes from the equation. And this is really the big stoichiometry part here. 
NaF on top and four moles of sodium. What that is going to do is cancel out our moles of sodium. And if we take basically six times 3.5 divided by four gives us 5.25 moles of NaF. And in this particular case, this would be the answer since we were looking for moles. But in a lot of cases, once you do step number three, you're always going to be in moles because you're doing a mole to mole relationship. So step number four, a lot of times is taking those moles and converting them to some other units like grams. So it didn't ask for it in this particular case, but a very common sort of step would be if you wanted grams. So if I wanted to do that, a very common sort of ending part of these calculations is to go back from moles to grams. And to do that, we would use the periodic table in the molar mass. So sodium is 22.99, fluorine is 19. That gives us something like 41.99 grams per mole for NaF. And again, this comes from the periodic table, the molar mass. And if we did that, what that would tell us is like 220 grams of NAF. So again, wasn't asked for in, in this particular problem, but it's a very common sort of fourth step that is done where you go from moles back to some other unit. A lot of times it's grams. And really what this tells us is in this particular reaction, if we threw in there 3.5 moles of sodium and everything went perfectly well, nothing bad happened, we didn't spill anything, no side reactions, we in theory should get out 5.25 moles of sodium fluoride, which represents 220 grams of sodium fluoride should be produced. These two numbers here are sometimes referred to as the theoretical yield. So the theoretical yield is when you figure out from a balanced equation and how much you're starting with, how much product you should produce. And that's like your maximum yield. Again, that's like if everything went 100% perfect, that is how much product you should actually make uh, when you do this reaction. All stoichiometry problems, which are basic stoichiometry problems, we'll talk about some little more difficult ones a little later on in this chapter, but basic stoichiometry problems are really those four steps that I wrote up there. Balanced equation, take what they gave you, convert it to moles, do the mole to mole relationship and then convert those moles to some other unit. Now, sometimes people really screw up because they go backwards. So what I mean by that is if something is done for you, you just go to the next step, don't undo it. So I've seen people, for example, in a problem like this, unconvert the moles of sodium back to grams and then go back to moles and kind of go backwards before they go forward. So, you know, obviously if something is done for you, just continue on. Any questions on any of those sort of steps there? All right, I'll just scroll through this. This is pretty much what we talked about, I think. Should be. That way, in case you want to see it later, you can. All right. So let's take another look here at a, another one here. Propane uh, is a common fuel. Predict how many moles of CO2 are formed when 3.74 moles of propane are burned with excess oxygen. So again, if we kind of work through this, we want to follow those four steps. So step number one is balanced equation, which looks like it's done. Step number two is take whatever they gave us. So in this case, they gave us 3.74 moles of propane, which is our C3H8. So that's already done for us. The next thing is to go to the equation and find the two things you're interested in. So again here, since they gave us propane, we're interested in this. And we're interested in CO2. So again, from the equation, we can see for every one mole of propane, we get out three moles of CO2. And again, from that equality, which is nothing more than just the coefficients, no real math or anything involved there, 
just the actual balance coefficient, we could get our two conversion factors here. So what we want to look for is what we want to get rid of. So we are starting with propane. So we do want to use the conversion factor on the right here because that will get rid of uh, propane and leave us with CO2, which is what we're looking for. So if we do that, again, the one mole of propane from the balanced equation gives us three moles of CO2, also again from the balanced equation there. And if we do that, we will end up with uh, 3.74 times three, gives us something like 11.2 moles of CO2. And this would be our answer here because we are looking for moles. And by the way, three sig figs here, three sig figs here in terms of our answer. Again, in this case, it didn't ask you to go to grams, but if you needed to go to grams, you would just continue on with your calculation. And again, a very common sort of fourth step is to take those moles to grams. So if you look up on the periodic table for CO2, it is 4401 grams per mole. And you can do that and times it by 11.2. And again, just to give you a sort of gram reference, this is 493 grams of CO2. Again, would be produced here. This again would be known as the theoretical yield in grams. This would be our theoretical yield in moles. Again, what this calculation is basically telling us is if we take this reaction and we toss in there, <clears throat> we toss in there uh, 3.74 moles of uh, our propane, everything went perfect, nothing bad happened. We would expect to produce 11.2 moles of CO2, which again is about 493 grams of CO2. Any question on those steps? Again, every kind of basic stoichiometry problem in the same four step, this would be step one. This is step two. Sorry, this was step two. This was step three. And again, wasn't asked for here, but this would be step four in this particular case. So really those four steps is really what you want to kind of follow in these sort of basic stoichiometry problems. Any questions on any of those steps? All right, so why don't you give this one a go, see what you come up with. Um, we got uh, nitrogen fluorine react for every four moles of N2. How many moles of F2 would you make? And while we're at it, why don't you do how many grams of F2? And fluorine is 19 grams per mole. So take a minute or two and see what you come up with.
Okay, so let's take a look here and, and see how we're doing. So again, I want to follow the same four steps. So first thing always is a balanced equation. And they won't always in big bold things tell you it's not balanced. So we want to start there. So to balance this, it looks like perhaps we need a two there and maybe a three there. So remember that all of this stoichiometry is based on the mole to mole relationship, which means you do want to make sure that you start with a balanced equation. Otherwise, again, you're not going to get the right relationship and obviously not the right answer. Step number two is to convert to moles. And in this particular case, they already gave us a number in moles, so we don't have to do that. So we do have four moles of N2 given to us. The third thing is really the big stoichiometry part, and that's the mole to mole relationship from the balanced equation. So in this particular case, obviously they gave us N2, so we're interested in N2, and we are looking for what is it what is it f2 there we go so we're looking for f2 in this case uh, which is this guy here so from the balance equation what we see is for every one mole of n2 we put in there we also need to put in there three moles of f2 again that's going to give us two conversion factors a mole of n2 over three moles of f2 are three moles of F2 over one mole of N2. Again here, we're starting with N N2, so we wanna get rid of it. So we will use the conversion factor here on the right. And if we do that, that's gonna give us one mole of N2 on the bottom and three moles of F2 up on top. Again, that is the mole to mole relationship from the balance equation that's going to cancel out our moles of N2. We're gonna take four times three, that should hopefully be 12 moles of F2. And for the question that it was asked is C, it looks like. Now, I also asked you to get to grams, so that would be kind of the four step here and take the moles to grams in this case. And again, to do that, we would need the molar mass of F2, uh, which would be 19 times two, which is 38. So for our additional part of it here, using the molar mass from the periodic table, it would be 38, 38 grams per mole. And that gets us, <clears throat> something like 456 grams of F2. Again, they are same four steps. So this is step one, step two, convert the moles, step three. And since we added this part, step four. Again, you may not always have to do step four, but uh, it will sometimes be necessary. Any questions on any of those steps? By the way, the, these two numbers that we just got here uh, would not be considered a yield. So a yield is only a product. So this, these, the F2 is a reactant. So this is not a theoretical yield or anything like this. This is again, just telling us how much of the other reactant we need to put in there to get this reaction basically to occur correctly. So for every four moles of N2 we toss in there, we also need to toss in 12 moles of our other guy. As you can see, again, it's a one to three relationship. So we need three times the amount of F2 for this reaction to take place. Any questions on that there? All right, why don't you try the next one here and see what you come up with. How many moles of aluminum hydroxide would be produced here uh, from 0.6 moles of CH4? So see what you come up with.
Okay, let's take a look here and see how we're doing. So uh, again, um, I want to always start with that balanced equation. So we want to make sure it's balanced. It obviously has no coefficients and it says unbalanced, so I'm assuming not. So maybe start with a four there for the aluminum, maybe a three there for the carbon. Let's see what kind of damage we just did there. So in terms of the oxygen here, we have 12 on the right and only one on the left. So maybe a 12 there. And uh, in terms of the hydrogen, that gives us 24. And we got uh, 12 on the guy on the right and 12 more, so 24. So that looks balanced in that case there. Yeah. All right, so now that we have it balanced, uh, we want to take whatever they gave us and convert to moles. And in that particular case, it is again already done for us. So we don't have to undo it, so 0.6 moles of CH4. Next thing is to find the mole to mole relationship. And again, uh, we are starting with CH4 in this case. So we're definitely interested in this one. And uh, we want to know how much of the aluminum hydroxide here would be produced. So from that, we see for every four moles of the aluminum hydroxide, we also get out three moles of methane. That gives us again, two conversion factors, four moles of aluminum hydroxide over three moles of methane are the opposite there. Three moles of methane gives us four moles of the aluminum hydroxide. So again, here, we want to get rid of moles of methane. So in this case, we want to use a conversion factor on the left there. And that gets us uh, four moles of aluminum hydroxide over our three moles of CH4. Again, that's the stoichiometry part there. Moles of CH4 are going to cancel. So we're going to multiply the top, which is 0.6 times 4 divided by three, looks like 0.8 would be produced. Again, three sig figs on that based off of our original number there of 0.6. So, oops, I circled the wrong one. There we go with D, it looks like a better circle there. Any questions on those steps? Again, same four steps, step one, Step two was already done for us, step three. And in this case, we didn't need to do step number four, which is sometimes the case. Any questions on any of those steps there? Okay, so since we have an exam, we will stop here for today. A reminder that the exam uh, will open up, kind of like last time, so it'll open up uh, maybe around 11.45 or so. Again, in case you have a class or something after art, so you can also feel so rushed or something like that. Normal sort of rules, no notes, no people, all that kind of stuff, right? Nothing, none of that stuff should be out. Uh, whatever is given to you um, is what you could use there. And um, again, you will have work that you need to upload. So obviously make sure that you upload that work immediately. Make sure again, use the proctorial like we've done before and do your best to get you and your work area in it. And other than that, um, again, obviously no lab today, just take the exam. You do need to start it around when it opens. So again, probably 12-ish or so the latest in that area, you know, you need to kind of really start. Um, otherwise, again, the computer might cut you off and not give you your whole time that's allotted for you and stuff, okay? <clears throat> Yeah, we are going to continue with uh, chapter nine on on uh, Wednesday. So we'll continue with chapter nine on Wednesday. A reminder as well, we moved um, experiment 15, I think, to Wednesday as well. So the pre-lab for that should be due and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Any other questions or anything like that? Okay. So good luck on your uh, exam and all that good stuff. Again, if you have any issues, feel free to email me when it's happening. So we could hopefully remedy it, but I, I think it should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, 
and again, we'll continue on chapter nine here and hopefully wrap it up on Wednesday and stuff like that. And again, uh, experiment 15, which I think is involves this type of stuff should um, be what we're doing on Wednesday. All right, any other questions? If not, make sure you put here if you haven't done so and I will see you on Wednesday. Hopefully my computer issues will be worked out. <laughs> All right, good luck, I'll see you later.